Hi there. <clears throat> can you hear me? Let me see if I can put on my... Good. Then, have two more people in here. And we're about to start. Give me just a second. Trying to fix this uh, technological stuff. I guess you can, everybody can hear me this way, but I would rather use the, this small microphone so that uh, that might be easier for everybody, including myself. I think so. Okay. All right. Uh, can you? Can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear me? Well, it looks like you guys can hear me, right? Okay, please tell me if you can hear the piano. Can you hear me? Perfect. Very good. <clears throat> so let's start. Let's get into this right now. How are you doing, guys? My name is Esteban Alvarez. I am a, I'm your host. I'm your pianist uh, from Costa Rica. Live here in Austin, Texas. And it's a pleasure for me to be with you here to, to do this live webinar. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume that you guys have taken this quiz that I put together, which is called uh the piano progress killer right and on that quiz i have given you some information as far as what i believe through my experience are the basic roadblocks that most people have when it comes to playing the piano um one of the things that i try to to convey to students, to people who like to learn how to play music and how to play the piano, is that you don't have to learn by reading music. You don't have to feel overwhelmed by having a book in front of you. You don't have to feel challenged by the fact that, you know, you can sit down and open a book and start playing and reading the music. And as a matter of fact, I think that's an obstacle because what happens when you don't have a music book in front of you? What happens if you go to a hotel or something like that and there is a piano and you just feel that itch that you want to play? I don't know if that has ever happened to you. And what do you do? There is no music book. It's like, you know, it's almost like if you were a doctor, but you can only perform your doctor knowledge your medical knowledge if you have your stethoscope with you it, it doesn't work like that right you know what you know and you can carry that information as long as you're alive now that implies that everybody has the ability to play by ear and that implies that all our brains are basically the same Unless there is some major challenges, uh, physiological challenges and stuff like that, which even though there is enough information that supports us, not the case. But let's put that aside. Everybody has the ability to learn to play by ear. Everybody has the ability to learn how to play the piano by ear. And I want you to think for a second and please write down in your chat a song that you will always like to play. I don't care what it is. I probably, I might not know it, if depending on where you are from. Um, 
as I said, I'm from Costa Rica and I don't listen to a lot of radio music. But please, please write a, a the name of a song uh, that you truly, truly would like to learn to play on the piano. That you say, you know, if I knew how to play this, I'll feel Y. If I knew how to play X, I will... I will feel why. If I had to know how to do these kind of things in the piano, this will happen. Please share with me that, if you don't mind. Let's see. Over the rainbow. Dan. Okay. Right? What else? How about you, Maria? Let's see who else is writing. Somebody else is writing right now. Okay, well, I have enough information. Let's say, let's just say one particular song right over the rainbow oh to joy peace sure i mean there's so so many things right like for example now that you mentioned this over the rainbow i dan just to to show you something i haven't played that song in years i don't really even remember the song that well but i'm, I'm presumably thinking you're talking about this right? Is that the one? And I honestly I haven't done that in years. I just, I'm just thinking about the song as I'm playing it and I'm trying to remember the chords and the melody. That's all I'm doing. And, and the way um, I think about playing by ear, playing with your ear, is, is very basic. It's like Let's have a conversation. So if I start talking about, okay, uh, Maria, I was born, I was born in Costa Rica. You were born in, and then you answer to me, I was born in Costa Rica. I don't know or anywhere else. Uh, did you have to think about to say and repeat those words? Did you have to think too much to know that you were born in Costa Rica or in India or in the United States or Canada, it, whatever? You're speaking right now to me and you're having a conversation and that conversation has never taken place before and you are talking and responding based on what I'm saying to you and based on the context so playing by ear is the same thing you're playing and responding based on what your input is now here is the the here is the catch and if there is one thing I want you to get out of this whole thing is what I'm about to say, because this might change completely the way you approach music. I might completely change your experience with music. Would you believe me if I tell you that there are sounds inside of your brain as you listen to something? For example, when you listen to this song, So let's say you listen to that song, right? Different, 
from other uh, senses like your your eyes, your touch, your smell, your senses, basically what they do is they send a signal to your brain and say, okay, it's smelling like smoke, there is fire, right? So your brain immediately recognizes that smell and produces some chemicals in your brain and sends it to your spine and then your spine sends all these neurons and connections and uh, responses so that you get in a specific mood and there is a lot of reactions inside of your body. So something happens externally and then something happens internally, right? That's how the brain works. Same thing with your eyes. You see colors and what you're seeing is not precisely because that thing is painted, this wall is painted blue, is because the reflection of the light touches your, your eyes, your retina, and then that sends a signal to your brain. Your brain transforms that light and then makes a picture of it in color blue, and that we call it color blue. That's how the brain works. Now, with the ear, though, it's a little bit different. When you're listening to something, actually, your brain is matching the sounds that you're listening out there. In other words, it's not that your brain picks up the signal and transforms it into something else. It's that the brain itself matches the sounds. It's like there was a mirror inside of your brain ear, so to speak, and then it reproduces exactly what you're, what you're listening to outside. So the question is, what if you could listen directly to those mirroring sounds inside of your brain? You will be able to come up with your own melodies. You will be able to play everything you listen to. And this is exactly what playing by ear is. And it is possible. And you can do it. And I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can do right now. Now, in order to start this whole thing, you say, well, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. But there has to have some structure. There has to be some structure involved. And that structure has to do with music theory, but not music theory that you write in books and that you have to do homework. It's music, music theory that you have to apply it right away. I remember when I was doing my, my degree in jazz, I remember a teacher use, uh, used to say something very, very important. Slow theory is not theory. Slow theory is not theory. If you cannot use the theory right away as you're playing, then it has no purpose whatsoever. You can write books about it. You can do homework about it. You can do all this stuff, but... It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, it doesn't serve any purpose other than just academically. In order for you to really, really grasp the foundation of what music is and how to play it, you have to apply the theory on the spot right now. It's like a martial artist. It's not like you, you know how to, you know how to block some hits or punches or something like that when you're practicing. It has to happen at any given time when you're being threatened on the street, without any warnings whatsoever. That's exactly the same that happens with music. You have to be able to catch it on the spot. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So, um, the first thing I want you to do has to do with melodies. Melodies are right hand. And I'm going to put the other camera here so that you guys can see this. Can you see this camera? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to use a dance song, which is Over the Rainbow, that I believe you like that song. So how do you do even start? Well, first of all, let's come with one basic thing that I... Um, that I want you to understand and take it for granted right now. Eventually, in further lessons and further explanations, I will go in depth on this. But for now, I just want you to assume that we're going to play everything in the key of C. Why? Because there is no black keys. 
involved unless there are accidentals, but this is just the key of C. Okay. It's just the key of C. So we're going to play on that key. <clears throat> and I want you, before we start on this song, before we start on that particular melody, I want you to go with me thinking of basic building blocks. The basic building blocks of music are the distances between one note and another one. And the each distance has a name. So we're going to start with the smallest distance. What's the smallest distance you can play between one note and another one? And this is called half step. The next one is this. Right? Because we already skipped this one. And this is called whole step. Then the next one will be this one, right? This is called minor third, major third, fourth, tritone, Fifth, minor six, major six, minor seventh, major seventh, octave. Why octave? Because there are eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm coming back to the first one, right? Those are all the intervals you can play on a piano. That's it. Minor second, major second, minor third, major third, fourth, tritone, fifth, minor six, major six, minor seven, major seven, octave. Are we clear on this? Please say yes to that. I just want to make sure that you guys understand what this is about. These are just the distances between one note and another one. Good. Okay. Now, as you play music or as you listen to music, I want you to start recognizing these intervals. Just like if I put a, just if I put a orange in front of you and I, and I, and I, uh, blindfold you, you will know if you put something on your eyes and you smell an orange, you know it's an orange. How do you know it's an orange? You haven't touched it yet. You don't know if it's a square thing. It doesn't matter because it smells like orange. So your smell is telling you, your sense of smell is telling you, okay, that's an orange, right? You don't need to see it. The same thing is with music. You don't need to see the keyboard you can listen to an interval and say, okay, that's that one. And each of them has a name. And that's what I went through the names. So specifically, on this particular song, Dan, over in the rainbow, what is the first interval of that song? It doesn't matter what key you start, but let's you see it as a reference point. I'm going to switch the camera again. Here it is. The first interval is the octave. Correct. And in fact, a way for you to memorize this interval is remembering this song, Over the Rainbow. You know now that Over the Rainbow starts with a octave. Somewhere over the rainbow, right? Da -da. But it doesn't matter what key you start because the distance is the same. Let's pick any key. Um, imagine we are five-year-old kids, and so we don't know anything about the piano. I'm just going to pick any key. It doesn't matter if it's black or white. 
So I'm going to start here. I don't know what key is that. I'm just going to use the same uh, um, approach. And I know it's an octave. It sounds right. So... And that's how you come up with melodies. You memorize the intervals first. So I know that Somewhere Over in the Rainbow starts with a octave. And I pick another key, F. Another key, D. See, it doesn't matter where I start. I know that that song will always start with an octave. And this is what is important because as you listen to something, you can remember, oh, that's this kind of an interval or this kind of another interval. And so what's going to happen next is as follows. So now you understand that you need to name each of these intervals, right? You need to name each of these intervals. For example, this one, you know, that's an octave. Now, I'm going to give you another example, which I give in one of my videos in the quiz. How about Star Wars? Remember Star Wars? Star Wars is a fifth. So if I know that a Star Wars starts with a fifth and I listen to a fifth somewhere there, I, oh, that's a fifth because the Star Wars starts like that. Or, oh, that's an octave because somewhere over the rainbow starts like that. Correct? And that's how you recognize intervals. You need to name them first. You need to go one by one on the piano as we did. And then you start putting names to it. And in fact, there are not many. It's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Those are the twelve possible intervals you can have. Once you memorize them, it's like memorizing twelve letters. Once you know them, you know, okay, that song starts like that. And the best way, the best approach, and this is the catch. This is the catch. The way to memorize an interval is when you relate a song with that interval. Let me say that again. The way to memorize an interval is when you relate a song to that interval. I just gave you an example. For example, Star Wars starts with a fifth. And let's put it here on the on the camera so you can see it. Right? That's the fifth, right? As and again, it doesn't matter what key you start. Dan, give me a key. What key would you like to start? It doesn't matter. You there? There you go, F. Right? That's a fifth. If you start in G, so always, as I said, when you know what's the first interval of a song, that will make things so much quicker and faster for you because you're starting with 
the basic you're starting with the basic thing which is what the first interval you have to recognize it how do you recognize it relate a song to that now and you're going to ask me well that's just for the very first interval how about the rest of it believe me as you memorize these sounds as if i if i tell you okay i'm going to play this and you tell me okay this is a minor second this is a major second this is a minor third this is a major third you will know that when you start recognizing when you're listening to music you will say oh that was a major second oh that was a minor second oh that was a fifth oh that was a fourth that's the homework you gotta do is to memorize those intervals in your head not on a piece of paper no no it's in your head you sit on the piano take two fingers and start that sounds very close, right? That sounds like, ah, something wrong. What's the name of that interval? Minor second. And then play it separately. I'm going to give you an example of what is a minor second, a, a song, a very famous song. You remember what this is about? The whole movie was made that way. Jaws. Back in the 80s. Believe it or not. The whole thing. When the shark was coming was about this. Because it sounds like suspense, right? That's a minor second. Another song for you to remember that starts on a minor second. Very famous song in the piano for Elise. This is minor seconds, right? As you go, Alice. Yes, that's right, too. So as you go, as you go on, on memorizing these particular intervals, you will learn. To recognize them, I, I can guarantee you, you could do this in a week. If you do this every day, in a week, you will never, ever forget what each interval is just by listening to it. Ever. It's not any different than when your mom calls you or your wife calls you or your husband calls you. You know that's the voice of your husband or your mom or your wife or whatever because your ear can pick up those nuances. Your brain can pick up those nuances. And then you're like, okay, that person is such and such. How do you know? How do you know if you're not looking at the person in front of you? Or you just heard them over the phone or something like that? Well, because that's how the brain works. You will recognize that. That's the first thing. So first homework for you, if you want to play by ear, number one, memorize the 12 possible intervals you can have on the piano or in music for that sake because if you if you what about you tell me um is every 12 gap tied with typical mood uh, it could be it could be not necessarily it could be if you ask me how about intervals that go from here to here well that's just a repetition of the same thing right this is the same as this. I love this minor six. You know how I, re how I remember a minor six? Remember this song? Love Story? That's a minor six. Right? So Maria says, I love that one. Well, I'm going to do that. I want to play it in A minor. Same thing. And I'm, I want you to look at the hands. So that you, I want you to pay attention to the melody to see how simple the melody is. And I'm going to get into the next part of this webinar, which has to do with the left hand. So just, show, just pay attention to the right hand 
as you listen to this song. That's a nice song. Now, I'm not bragging or anything like that, but I just want to prove a point. Would you believe me that I have never played that song entirely? Not once in my life. Ever. Not a single time in my 30 years of playing the piano. I have never played that song entirely. I have listened to it a thousand times, but I've never played it. I've played pieces of it, but I've never done what I just did. And this is what I'm trying to convey to you. You can do the same thing. The reason I can do this is because I can hear what the song is. I have listened to that song for so many times that my brain just recognizes it, mirrors it, and I'm just reading what the brain is saying. That's all it is. It's like this conversation. So, but if you looked at what I did, if you look at what I did, the melody wasn't such a big deal. In fact, I'm going to go back and play the melody, just the melody for you. And I want you to see this. Now, please, in all honesty, from 1 to 10, how hard is that melody? Give me a number. Just whatever you feel. How hard you think that melody is. You just saw me playing that simple melody. I want you to give me a number between 1 and 10. How hard was that melody to play? Easy to three, right? How about you, uh, Maria? Same as Dan, two and three. How about Fran? Fran says four. Okay. So you guys say two, three, and four. Now, so we can say that that's an easy piece to play, right? We can objectively say this is not a hard piece to play. It's not. Now, that doesn't mean that it doesn't sound pretty. It doesn't mean that it's not beautiful. The fact that something is easy doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. And, and likewise, the, the fact that something is complex or hard doesn't make it pretty. There is a lot of fast music that you probably don't care for much, especially if you like piano music. You know, there is a lot of stuff that actually on the piano, it sounds very strident that you're like, okay, that's too much. You can only take a, 
one song and that's it. That's why it doesn't really matter. The level of difficulty is how pretty you can make it sound, how beautiful you can make it sound. And that depends now on the next part of this, which has to do with the famous left hand. The left hand is the cushion, the matrix where you land everything you do with your right hand. I want to make a small announcement, very quick. You know, I've been playing the piano for 30 years, um, a little bit over that, actually. I'm 40 years old, and I started when I was 9 years old, so 31 years. And I wish somebody, when I was 11, 12, could explain the stuff that I know now to me back then. Um, and I had to learn in many ways the hard way. I have to figure out a lot of stuff on my own and, and come up with my own style of music and my own methodology. Uh, but because of that, I know that it works. I know that if you learn from me, I can assure you, you will play the piano if you put your new part. You will learn how to do it. And for you guys that are here today, I have just a special announcement. If you're interested, I am selling my course. And you are the first people that are being welcome to join this, this uh, cohort for next month at a very, very discounted price. I am discounting my course, which is a six, six lessons, six week program of what you're seeing in depth with me. It's a pre-recorded, but also you have a one-on-one -on -one session with me so that I can listen to you, see where you are at, see what your goals are. So it's a six lesson plan that will normally cost a lesson that I from me cost a hundred and twenty dollars an hour so you make the numbers but i'm discounting it right now for you guys that are staying here at 197 dollars the whole thing and also you have a one-on-one -on -one session with me if you're interested and as i said if you i can assure you that if you do what i ask you to do on the piano and you put your part you will play you will learn how to do it um I've done this hundreds of hundreds of times and I know how it goes. So if you're interested, let me know. But let's back to the to the subject. Let's go back to the to the the meat of this part, which has to do with the left hand. How do you know what chords do you put in music in a particular song? That's the million question, right? Before I answer that question, you need to know how to make chords, right? If you ask me, Esteban, how do you, how do you make, uh, how do you cook a lasagna? Well, before I even learn how to cook lasagna, I need to know how to make pasta, how to put the pasta, you know, whatever. I don't cook, so... <laughs> So please spare my, my analogy. But you cannot use, you know, um, if you ask somebody to, to cook something for you, you are assuming that person even knows how to turn on the stove, right? Because otherwise they wouldn't cook. It's just a simple thing. It sounds simple and it sounds silly, but it's not. A lot of people think, well, I don't know what to do with my left hand. And I know these and these chords, but no. What a minute. Do you really know your chords? Do you really know what a major chord and a minor chord is? Do you know what a diminished chord is? Do you know how to make them? Do you know the sequence of chords that you can use? Do you know there is a progression in music? Uh, okay, if you don't know that, then it's almost impossible that you are going to be able to just put chords randomly. It doesn't work like that. So let's go first and foremost on this very powerful lesson. If you remember this, as I said, you will walk away with a lot of information that normally you don't find in books. You, in fact, you won't find in a book. I've 
I've read ev pretty much every single piano teaching book in here in the United States, just to prove my point, to see if it teaches you how to understand a chord. And none of them does. I can't understand why nobody has taken the time to do this. And while well, I'm doing it right now, let me show you this. First of all, what's the difference between a major chord and a minor chord? Do you guys know that? Okay, Fran says, it sounds sad or happy. Dan says, no. How about you, Maria? Mm, yes, I know them. Good. Okay. Perfect. Well, let's go through them quickly so that they can understand what it is. And maybe, Maria, this can help you as well a little bit. Because I have a particular way to know to do them that might be a little easier too. First of all, what is a chord? And a lot of kids, when I say this, say, well, it's, it's just a bunch of uh, notes put together. Well, I mean, that could be some sort of true. But if that was the case, then this would be a chord. And that's not a chord. So, yes, it's several notes put together in a discrete, organized way. There is an order behind it. And there is so much more about this that I just cannot cover it right now. But let's just for now, for the sake of this, let's start with the key of C. A note by itself is not a chord. A note is just a note. A chord starts when you make a family around that particular note. And a family means that there are some relationships between the, the note that I'm playing. How do you call those relationships? Intervals. We just saw it, right? We just saw that there are 12 different intervals. This is why it's so important to understand what your intervals are. So let's start with a just a regular note, key, uh, one key. I'm going to start with the key of C. How do I make a C major chord? Take the note you are in. This is the, this is the name of my it will be the name of my chord, C, right? And I'm going to count four half steps. Four half steps. Look at this. And I don't start from this one, right? Because what is the distance between this and this? Zero. What is the distance between me and me? Nothing. It's just zero, right? In order for something to have distance there, you need to have two things at the very least. So let's start thinking this way. Here is your note. One, two, three, four. And then I landed here. And now we're going to count three half steps. One, two, three. So a major chord is your note, whichever note you want. We're using the C as an example. Plus four half steps. One, two, three, four. Plus three half steps. One, two, three. Which is the same to say a major chord is your note plus a major third, once you know the intervals plus a minor third from this one once you know the intervals. But so I'm not, I don't want you co to confuse you right now. You need to learn your intervals first. But before that, I'm just going to call them just half steps because you know the half steps is the smallest unit in music. You cannot go smaller than this, at least in Western music. A half step is the smallest distance between one note and another one, right? So I'm going to count again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And this is a C major. How about a minor chord? Just change the order. Is the note plus three. One, two, three. Plus four. One, two, three, four.
So major, minor, and what's the difference in sound? Now let's, again, you're not looking at the keyboard. Let's change this camera. Let's change the camera. What's the difference in sound? If I do this, I want you to just type for me just by listening to it. Don't worry about what I'm playing. Just tell me if it's a minor sound or a major sound. Go. Major. Good. How about this one? Major as well. See, how do you know that? Why is it major? Can you tell me why? It feels major. See, you're playing by ear. This is what ear is about. You feel something. You're listening. In fact, you say it, it feels like in, what, what is actually happening right now. Then it's not, You're not feeling anything per se. Your brain is signaling a particular sound inside of you and you are relating that sound to something that feels either happy or positive or enthusiastic or something like that and you call it feels major. And that is correct. Um, I don't know in what time in history we related major with happiness and minor with sadness. It doesn't necessarily have to be that way, but you're right. That's a major. Next. Major, minor. Like minor, not sure. You are right, it's minor. Because major would sound like this. Right? That song that Maria likes. Starts in a minor key or a major key? Let's see here what you guys say. Minor, yes. If it starts in a major, it will sound weird and funny. It would be like this. I changes the whole thing. It doesn't make any sense, right? It's actually funny when you do stuff like that. So first of all, that's the number one thing. You got to understand the difference between major and minor by listening to it. And of course, by looking at it. And now the next thing I want to show you is how do you use chords? And I'm not going to go into what progressions are and all that stuff because I don't have enough time for this. And and because this will take much, much more time than this. But this is something I want you to learn today. Uh, do you remember who Richard Kleiderman was? Or Raul Di Blasio? Or Yanni? Do you guys listen to any of the, those pianists? Okay. Which one? Particularly, Maria? Maria says, Raul Di Blasio and Richard Kleidman. Okay, Maria. 
here's the catch for today. And this might, might uh, be worth the entire hour with me, what I'm about to teach you. Then I will show you who those guys are. They're very famous pianists that play popular music on the piano. Maria, would I, if, you, if I tell you that Richard Kleinemann played everything absolutely in the same way, there is no one single recording. He has like a hundred albums and all of them sound exactly the same way. If I teach you how to do the left hand, would you believe me that you can do that in the next 20 minutes or less? It's very simple. Let's use a chord, right? Let's use our C major chord. And this is what I want you to practice. If I play a song with this, let's do, um, I'm gonna do, well, in fact, let's do, let's do uh, uh, a Maria song. Um, it's called Love Story. The first chord of that song is A minor if you play in the key of A. So let's do A minor, which is A, C, E. Why is that A minor? Because it's A plus, to make a minor chord, remember three, three plus four, right? Is the other way than the major. So plus three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, right? So that's the first chord we're gonna use in this song. I'm just going to play that part. And I'm going to show you what Richard Kleiderman does and how easy this is. Instead of playing the chord like this, if I play like this, does it sound pretty? Honestly, just say yes or no. No, right, it doesn't sound pretty. And I'm playing the right notes. No, exactly, it doesn't sound pretty. What makes it sound pretty is when you break apart the chord. If you play it just like this, it's called a block chord, it doesn't sound good. You're just playing the notes all together. You're stacking the notes one on top of the other and that doesn't make it sound pretty. Now, what Richard Kleiderman does Look what he does. He plays the root of the chord, in, in other words, the first note of the chord with the pinky. He jumps to the fifth of the chord, in other words, the last note of the chord. Remember, this is the chord, right? This is the fifth of the chord because from here to here, there is a fifth. Again, your intervals. So, root, fifth, and then the third of the chord, which was this note, C, right? He put it up here. Again, this is the chord. I'm going to take the A with the pinky. Then I jump to this note. And then this note, I'm going to put it up here. Listen to this. And now listen to this. That's Richard Kleiderman's style. Every single piece that that guy has played is the same way. It's just a beautiful way to put the left hand, to make the left hand sound pretty. Let's go with another example. There is another very, very famous song, Dan. This is called Ballad for Adeline. And it starts in C major again. 
This is your C major chord, C, E, G. Let's do this in a major chord together. So instead of playing just this, I want you to break apart the chord. Play the root. By the way, the name of, the name of each note within the chord is as follows. Root, third, fifth. I'm going to write this down here just so you guys know this. Root, third, fifth. Those are the three names of the core, of a, whether it's a major or minor chord. This is the root, this is the third, this is the fifth, right? So I'm going to play the root with the pinky. Jump to the fifth with the pinky again and then the third up here Etc. Etc. But you see how simple is it's it looks complicated, but it is not complicated. So the exercise that I want you to do, I want you to take these chords and you're gonna do this on each individual chord. You're gonna do it on C major, on A minor, on D minor, and on G major. And this is the exercise and homework you guys are going to do. Just four chords. I just give you four chords. C major, A minor, D minor, and G major. Let's play first the chords just simple, right? This is C major, right? We just did it. Then A minor. Then D minor. And then G major. Right? I want you first to, to come up with the chords. Remember, how do you make a major chord? So major chord. How do you make it? Root. Close four. Plus three. Minor chord. Root. Plus three. Plus four. Right? Are we clear on this one? Yes. Good. Perfect. And I understand you, Maria. Yes. Okay. So we're going to do just these four chords. Please don't go do anything else so that you, we can get this down and you will see how this can enhance your playing today. C major, A minor, D minor, and G. And now the next thing I want you to do is we're going to break apart each of these chords the way I just taught you. Root with a pinky. Make sure you use the right finger. Jump to the fifth of this chord with the pinky. And then the third of the chord, the thumb. So that's for C major, right? Now A minor, same thing. D minor. G major.
And if you are from Latin America, maybe you, Maria, remember this thing. And actually, uh, Dan, for your song, for Somewhere Over the Rainbow. The chords are very similar to that, too. But you see, this is the homework I want you to do. Do you understand that homework? Just take four chords. Don't go further so that you can learn them. Play. First of all, make up the chord. How do you know the chord? You understand already what intervals are. You know the major chord is root plus four plus three. Break it apart. How? Root, fifth, third. Root, fifth, third. Root, fifth, third. Root, fifth, third. And now you broke up the chords. And now you can start playing your own stuff with a style that has become so famous and popular, made popular by many pianists, like this guy, Richard Kleiderman, and so forth. Guys, I have, this is already the hour. Um, yes, I've been, I've been with you already an hour, and it's been a pleasure to be here with you, as I said, for those who stayed until the end, if you guys stay to, until the end and you're interested in my course, I leave you the link over here. And this is just for this time. I'm not going to do this again. Doors open today. And I'm going to close them in 14 days because we're going to have a new cohort of people joining. And, and I will go in depth on these things that you just learned today and more. And... Normally, as I said, my lessons are $120 per lesson here in the United States. I am putting six lessons, like these comprehensive lessons, for the whole thing for $197. And you will have access to a one-on-one -on -one time with me so that I can listen to you. I can hear your concerns. I can listen to where you are. And so that we can have a specific plan of what exactly you need to do to get you where you want to be. If this has been helpful, if this has been a, a, um, of good use to you, uh, I hope so. Please share this information with other people. Um, I hope you guys uh, learn as much as you can from me. I would love to be your teacher. And as I said... You will learn. Uh, then it is once a week. Okay, the course will be, it won't be live. It's a pre-recorded. Each lesson is pre-recorded. The, the time with me is live and it's just you and I. We'll have just a specific time, you and I together, where I can go uh, over the stuff that you really, really want to do and what I think you need to do. The course consists of six lessons, comprehensive lessons, where I'm going into all these things. And you can access them anytime you want once you join the cohort. And, and there's some more materials, and I will be updating this stuff. So you will have access to that, lifetime access to it once you get it. And as I said, I will go in depth on all of these details and specific songs as well. Um, normally, I would say take one lesson Per week take one class per week don't go over that because you need to practice and you need to go over the material so that you actually get it um, but as i said if you're interested i leave you the link over here and i will get back to you right away so that we can schedule once the cohort starts when the whole thing starts i can schedule the first 
uh, one-on-one -on -one time with you and so that we can specifically go over the the stuff that you want to do as i said i've been doing this for many 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 years i know how to get you from here to here if you follow the instructions and you put your part of course right this is not something i do by myself you need to do it yourself too if you're interested if you want to give some time to this um but i can assure you that if you if you follow it you will learn to play by ear you will learn the basic stuff the building blocks of how to do this stuff um, by ear without the need of music books without the need of all that stuff and this is a knowledge that you will have and carry forever and ever and that you could do at any given point in time and music is i'm assuming is part of your life so this will make it even more so um i know how to do it if you trust me we'll get you there uh, i've been doing this for many years and as you say as you can see i've done it myself and I can do it with you. So if you give me the opportunity, I leave you the link. Um, it is only one time, one on one. Yes, it is only one time, one on one. At the first, we're going to do one, one, one on one. And then at the end of the course, we're going to meet once again to cover the whole thing to see how your progress went. So it's basically two times one on one. But the first one is probably the most important because that's when we're going to plan ahead before you start on the course and start taking this stuff and also you can reach me at any point through an email and i'll answer to you as well um but as i said this is just a price that i'm not sharing with anybody because you guys stayed until the very end of this webinar in fact i'm not gonna publish this live webinar because i specifically sent the invitation to you guys through the quiz through all the process and you guys did it you guys stayed until the end you guys uh, listened to the whole thing you guys put your effort so this is my gift and reward to you again is the price of it's actually the price more i would charge just a little bit less for two lessons and now this is for six lessons it's a complete a course of how to play by ear so let me know if you're interested uh, i leave you the link i will get in touch right away with you if you if you uh click on it and if you become part of the cohort and we'll start planning ahead because it will start next month the whole thing will start next month so you can get ready so you can get stuff ready and materials and even a song that you might want to work on that i will help you specifically with and that's part of the one-on-one -on -one thing. We'll go on specifically something that you really, really want to tackle. And we'll go in through that. And then the course will take you through the process as well as the communication we will have through emails and all this stuff. So leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for staying to all the ends. I hope this webinar has given you some value that you can take home, that you can implement right away. And hit me if you have any more questions, if you have any more concerns, and I will be happy to assist you, okay? And then Maria Jose says, thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for joining. Thank you for staying until the end. I appreciate your time, and I appreciate that you stayed here. I know you guys have other stuff to do. Today is Saturday night, and yet you wanted to be here. So thank you. I will do more of these live webinars coming up uh, if you're still interested in joining. And link is there. I'll talk to you soon. Uh, Dan, thank you very much. Fran, thank you very much. Jose, oh, he just disconnected. Yeah. But thank you guys. Thank you guys for being here and we'll be in touch. You guys have a, I think, Dan, you're still uh, typing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you're interested, you know what to do. The link is up here. Go and click on the link. And I will, if you're interested and you become part of the cohort, there is a link over there. And I will reach back to you right away so that we can stay in touch and start this whole thing together. Okay? Have a good night. Stay safe. 
uh, be careful out there. Uh, and we'll talk soon. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.